I done told Lady T about introducing me. My pastor introduced me, I don't get emotional. Lady T introduced me because she's so dear to my heart. I get emotional and my, my cousins being here really took me over the top, you know, because I haven't seen them in a while. And, you know, my cousin Nikki has the sweetest spirit of probably anyone I know. Every time I see her, she has a smile on her face. And it just, just lifted my spirits to see, to see you guys. And I thank, I thank everyone for coming out this morning. But let's get to the work because it's not about me. Let me ask you a question. How many of us in here have a cell phone? Oh, much everyone, right? You know what's interesting when we bought that cell phone? What came with that cell phone? Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> but also a book of instructions on how to use the cell phone. Amen, right? How many of us have read that book? Wow, only a couple of people. Now, I haven't read it either. I say that to say this, you know, we buy these electronic devices and we figure, we don't have to read the book of instructions, you know why? Because we figure as we go, we'll figure it out. That's what we tell, you know, we'll just learn. If we get somewhere and we get stuck with the phone, we'll call one of the millennial kids, these tech kids, and they'll help us out. And that's okay with your cell phone. But as a Christian, that's not okay. And I think at times, you know, we, we, we've been saved, we confess that we love the Lord and, and God has saved us and Jesus is our, our, our Savior. And there's another book that came when you became a Christian. Uh -huh. And that book is the Bible. Yes. And when you are new in Christ, you read the Bible to get information, to learn about who Christ is, to learn about who God is. And that's a beautiful thing. Amen. But as we grow in our walk with Christ, we need to elevate our minds and we need to graduate from reading the Bible as something to inform us, to get knowledge, to read the Bible because the Bible has instructions in it on how to live this life as a Christian. So, if we are going to be effective today, if we are going to draw people to Christ, and if we are going to save souls, they are going to look at us as Christians because we should be setting it a higher standard. We should be an example to the world because the Bible tells us that we are the salt of the earth, that we should allow our light to shine, that people may see our good works and glorify our Father where in heaven. Yes. So that tells me that the Bible is rather important in our walk. Yes. Amen? Yes. So let's go to the Word. Turn your Bibles to Romans 12. Yeah, Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. You know, the book of Romans is, is really an outstanding book to read. Uh, it's been referred to as the Constitution of Christianity. And also it's been referred to as the Christian Manifesto and the Cathedral of the Christian Faith because it's full of, of very valuable instructions on how to be a Christian. You know, it's not good enough to say you're a Christian today. That simply is just not good enough. It is time for us to go to the next level to where people can actually see that, see that Christianity in you, see that love in you. So, if you got those scriptures, say amen. amen. And it reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Today, when we look at this dark, lost world, and even when we look out through the church, 
we see so many people simply doing whatever they want to do. Regardless of what's been taught to them, what they've studied, what they've learned, whether it be in school, or church, Bible study, or Sunday school, because they've grown up and they've gotten comfortable and they're adults, they tend to want to do what they want to do. But I'm here to tell you, you don't even belong to yourself. Amen? We, we were bought with a price. Okay, Jesus paid a price that we could never pay. So therefore, knowing that Jesus paid that price, we're not, we're, we don't just belong to ourselves. We just can't do what we want to do. We just can't live life all willy-nilly. There's standards at being a Christian. Paul is the author of this particular book and these particular scriptures. And what he's saying when he says, I beseech you, he's actually pleading. He's pleading with you. And what he says is, I'm pleading with you, therefore, my brethren, that you would present yourselves as Christians. The light is shining on us. Paul is saying that we need to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. What does that mean? That means not your will, but God's will. Sacrifice what you want, what you want to do, and seek what God will is for your life. The Bible tells us that if we are willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. There's a lot of willing servants. But there's not a lot of obedient servants. We have to learn to not just confess with our mouths, but our behavior must now line up to what a Christian truly is. And it's not up to the person sitting next to you to determine what a Christian you are. It's not up to your teacher. He says, let's keep reading. Acceptable unto God. So therefore, what is right is according to what God says is right. God's righteousness is what's right, not yours, just because you are educated. And you have all those, you know, letters behind your name, you know, PhD, MDS, all that stuff. Don't make you a better Christian than a person who just simply lives the word of God. It doesn't. Because sometimes we can get so full of ourselves, okay, that we want to now judge the next person and tell him, well, you know, he ain't that much of a Christian. Says who? Says who? Who are you comparing him to? Well, what kind of standards are we set for ourselves as Christians? The greatest living sacrifice that walked the face of the earth is Jesus Christ. So if you're not measuring yourself up against Jesus Christ, stop it. You're wasting your time. Jesus embraced the will of God. What did you say? I am about my father's business. That's what he said. And he knew that he was a living sacrifice. He was literally a living sacrifice. Paul is just asking us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. He's not asking us to go to the cross, but he's asking us also to, you know what? He's saying not only to be a living sacrifice, but he's saying that we need to be holy. Jesus says, I am holy, so therefore you need to be holy. That's what the Bible says. I found it so interesting. You know, I don't want to take that word for Granted. So I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to look up a few definitions of holy. You know, I, I don't want to just go by what people tell me. I'm going to share with you what I researched and found out. Holy, exalted, or worthy of complete devotion as one perfect in goodness and righteousness for the Lord our God is holy. And then one of the devoted entirely to the deity or the work of the deity, having a divine quality, love. God is love. The Bible says 
in the beginning, it was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And then later on, God, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So if Jesus is God and he is the Word, and he is our Savior, and we serve him, then it seems like to me there should be some of those same characteristics that was in Jesus Christ that should be in me. So it behooves you to not just hear the word. What did James say? James 22 says, but be doers of the word and not just hearers deceiving your own selves. Yeah. See, you know, people come to church, you know, I, I look at sometimes, you know, I know some people who go to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, they, yeah, yeah, I go to the gym four, five times a week, man. I say, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. They must have buffets at the gym because you don't look like you go to the gym four, five times a week. You know, I hear you talking. But what I see, either the gym is closed when you get there. Or the buffet is just free. <laughs> because you don't look like it. So I don't, I don't want to, I'm not going to the gym with you. Because it ain't helping you. <laughs> so if you a Christian and you're trying to win a soul, but yet you out there doing your thing at the club, you go home and you beat on your wife, you're cussing your husband out, you're talking about the neighbors. When you invite me to church, I'm going to say you real nice. Thank you, but no thanks because church ain't doing you no good. Come on, I don't see no difference in you. Yes. So why am I going to go to that church that you invited me to and I see with my own two, I, 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 I see the brown bag on the weekend. Well, I see that brown bag. Oh, I, see. I see what you're doing. So because I see, and we we live in a world because of what we see in influences. Amen? So that, that, there's a reason why Paul is saying this. Because we are living in a world there's almost 8 billion people in the world. But unfortunately there's only about 2.75 billion of Christians. We are quite outnumbered. Which lets me know Something's missing. Something's missing. We're not winning souls at a rate that's satisfying to the word or to God. Ah, all right. Or to God. So when I was praying to God and I was asking God, I said, Lord, what shall I tell you people? I've got to go before them, Lord. He says, well, you know, they, they hear messages all the time. People preach all the time. Is get to a point, Brother Luke, we need to start teaching. Yes. He said, I need you to teach them on Christianity, yes. on what it truly the essence of being a Christian. Yes. Okay. Bill, I'm Pastor Bill. He has a wonderful testimony, yes. awesome testimony. Yes. But there's a part in his testimony that he shares that really opened up my eyes. And when he got saved and when he began his walk, and, and Bishop Warren would come by and check on him and, and minister to him and encourage him. And, and he, when he left one day, Pastor Bill says, I don't know what it is that he has, but whatever it is, I want it. You see, you see what I'm saying? So as a Christian, how many people are looking at you and saying, I want to be like you? I want to go to church because whatever is happening in that church, I want a part of it. I want to be like you. I want to be like Christ. That can be the fastest, easiest definition of a Christian. Two words. Christ-like. That's it. That's it. It's not very complicated. But there's a lack of commitment. There's a lack of understanding of truly what a Christian is. But we have a book right here Come on now. tells you all you want to know about Jesus Christ. What to do. I heard a message that blew my mind years ago. I was listening to Great Word. And he was talking about the Word of God. And he used the Bible. He used an acronym of the Bible. And I had never heard it before. And he said, Bible, B-I-B-L-E. Biblical instructions before leaving.
leaving earth. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. I said, wow. So I, I studied the word so much. And I said to myself, oh, I got to go to another level. The Bible is just not about the word and knowledge of God and who Jesus is, but it's also full of instructions. Even though we don't read that book when we get our cell phone, we can get by with trying to figure it out. But as a Christian, we are not going to get by if we are not following the instructions of God. And he's laid it out black and white in his book. But you got to crack this book open. And then you got to be doers, not just hearers. So you just can't go around sounding like you're holy. The definition, I just gave you the definition of holy. Nowhere in there it says sound holy. It didn't say, okay, just say them holy words. That'll get them. No. No, it said the, the, the valid, exalted devotion, dedication, commitment. It's up to us. We have work to do. When Jesus died on that cross, he reconciled us back to God. So God took ownership of us. We became servants when we entered into that relationship with God. We became servants of God, representatives of God. As representatives, people are looking at us as Christians. If we're going to win souls, it's not what comes out your mouth. It's how you live. Look at your neighbor and say, how you living? That's what it's about. It's a, that's what it's about. That's a, that's a whole different level of Christianity. It, well, it's 2018. You, you meet a lot of people before they tell you their name. I'm a Christian. I, 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 can I get your name first? They, they boast about being a Christian. But when I read my word, God doesn't like people that boast. You earn it disobeying the word. Don't get me wrong, coming to church, the Bible tells us to come to church. But James said we just can't hear. Amen? Now, look, this is the beauty of God's word. God don't just give us instructions. God tells us how to do it. Isn't that a beautiful thing? How many times have you cooked something at home and you, you, you follow the instructions on the box and then when you go to take a bite into it, you go, uh-oh. Let me grab that box one more time. I think I must have forgot something. Then you call somebody on the phone. What's the first thing they tell you? Well, did you follow the instructions on the box? <laughs> That's what they tell you. Because if you don't follow the instructions, it may not look like that picture is on the front of the box. And that's a dead giveaway. I take a box and put it up next to it. If it don't look up, they don't need me trying that. I need to get another box to start all over. Because that picture is an indication of what it should look like if you do all this right. Amen. That's what that is. What does a picture of a Christian look like today? Oh, talk to me. They should be a bunch of little Jesus walking around. Yeah. Okay? Christ like. Yeah. I can, look, look, at, look at Jesus down there. What, what's up, Jesus? Where you going, Jesus? Oh, okay, I see you later, Jesus. But that ain't what's going on. Well. I'll tell you what's going on. Well, you look at so much, so. I can't believe that she was doing that last week, man. I can't believe she's still doing that. Mm. Now, that's a Christian talking. Wow. It's Christian talking. I went, I, I tell you, this is a true story. I went to visit a church. A long time ago, I went and visited a church. As they were good, visited a church. And because me and Alana are so familiar with a lot of this traditional stuff, we were just calling. She was calling the service. I was calling the service. What was going to happen next? And blah, blah. We were just, we were dead on. And another Christian in the church turned around and called us a name. Right in church. I looked at Lana. And she's sitting in the second row so she can be seen. Right. She says she's a Christian and you talking about us in the church simply because we're speaking the truth. And I said, boy, pray for her. 
Now, if you invite me to your church again, I'm not coming. Because if you talk about me in church, what are you saying about me outside of church? What are you saying? That's not helping me. Paul spells it out right here. Sacrificing what we want to do, what we want to say, how we want to act, how we want to carry ourselves, where we want to go, but searching the scriptures, following God, and doing what God says, walking in obedience to God. That's your reasonable service according to Paul. In other words, that's the least you can do for God. That's the least you can do for God. It's simply obey His will. Jesus Christ, greatest example. But even Jesus had a moment. You remember the story about Jesus right before He went to the cross? And you remember when He was talking to the Father? And He said, if it be at all possible, God, and His cup passed me, but watch this, immediately what did he say next? He said, God, your will, not mine. Right. It wasn't two weeks later. It wasn't two months later. It was immediately he got back into the spirit realm. He got back into being about his father's business. We have a tendency to be so sensitive. Oh, my God. Glory. Lord, help us. Somebody said something. Oh, they hurt my feelings. They hurt my feelings. They didn't really hurt your feelings. Or maybe you simply didn't get your way. Maybe they didn't do what you wanted them to do. Maybe they didn't say it the way you wanted them to say it. Maybe they're not catering to your flesh. So now your feelings hurt. I gotta leave the church. Well, all right. well. I'm gonna go to another church. I ain't going there, but it hurt my feelings. The name of the church wasn't called Come Here and We'll Hurt Your Feelings. <laughs> but what's wrong with Christians today is that we go to church with an expectation the church should do what we say they should do. They should run it the way we want them to run it. They should preach the way we want them to preach. They should say what we want them to say. But when they knock on your door and speak the truth, the only done true gospel, you get offended. Let me tell you something. That's what the word of God is supposed to do. The word is going to knock your side your, set, your head. If it ain't, something's wrong. Come on now. Because let me tell you something as a Christian. You are going to go through. Jesus went through, but he endured. Because he wasn't about himself. He wasn't thinking about himself. He wasn't concerned with people just complimenting him, living him. He was concerned about people glorifying his father. He was concerned about saving souls. Never once when I read the Bible did anyone ever call Jesus. And Jesus turned around and Jesus answered. He said, yes, my brother. And he said, Jesus, have you seen Peter? And Jesus replied, no, I'm not speaking of Peter right now. He ain't the last piece of fish. That's how Jesus responded. Jesus had an attitude because Peter ain't the last piece of fish. No, that's not in the Bible. But in the world we live in today, as Christians, how many times, when I first came to California, 18 years old, from Memphis, Tennessee, I had met some buddies I played ball with. And so when I saw them, because I'm from the South, hey man, how's your mother doing? Well, I don't know, because I'm not speaking to my mother. She made me mad. Blew my mind. I'm 18 years old. I've never heard of this. this. This didn't make any sense to me. And I said to myself, hmm, I got a 
got a lot to learn. I got a lot to learn. Because as a Christian, I can't react the way I want to react to everything that happens to me. Yeah. Even though I think it in my mind. Uh -huh. I drive for a living. I get cut off every single day. I got to pray constantly. Yeah. Because when they cut me off and almost caused an accident, initially, for, for a minute second, there's something in my flesh just rising up and want to come out. I, I, I want to say it. And sometimes I want to give that universal one sign. But then it, 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 God says, no. See, see, God wouldn't be pleased. That would not be acceptable unto God. Yes. Yes. So I bite my tongue. Well. And I pray. Now there's nobody in the trunk with me. So I probably could get away with it. But here's the problem with that. God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So God said. So I don't have to put on an act in front of people. Even when I'm by myself. I'm trying to obey God. Yeah. So when Paul is pleading with us and asking us to present ourselves a certain way, in the very next verse, he tells us what it is and how we can do what he's telling us in verse 1. He said, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect it is. Will of God. Yes, yes, yes. Not the world ways. Not the world communication. Not the world, world's perceptions. Not world philosophy. But the Bible says, be not conformed. In other words, we can't be like the world. The Bible teaches us that if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Amen, amen. I can say it, the Bible said. So that tells me that I can't, I, something's got to change. The Word of God should bring about a transformation in you. What does the Word say? The Word says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That tells me that that needs to be a change. I, I, I was in the world. Now I'm in Christ. Which means that I should be born again. The nature that I had in the world, the nature and the heart that I was born with that Jeremiah talks about, I've got to do like David did and asked God to create in me a clean heart and we do a right spirit in me. This has to be a request. This has to be something that you personally have to do before God because we can't keep making excuses for our behavior and saying, well, I don't know. No one's ever told me. So you don't own a Bible. Is what you're telling me? No, no, I, I have a Bible. So where is your Bible? Are, are, are you looking for the instructions, the how to do, to be able to overcome the temptations of the world? Yeah. Through the word of God. If you are Christian and you've been a Christian, but yet your behavior and your habits are still the same, then you confess to someone that's trying to come into Christ that you are Christian, you're painting a picture that's undesirable. Yes. Amen. You, that's not how you win a soul. You, you, if you want to invite someone to church, it's just like anything else. You invite people to parties, whatever. When that invitation goes out, the first thing they do is they think about who you are. And what are you inviting me to? And no one church today Let's be real. There's a lot of people that misrepresent God today. 
Amen. That's just the truth all by itself. I can't sit up here and lie. But I thank Paul that he made it so simple. He said that transform, renew our mind. How do we renew our mind? The Word of God. The Word of God. The Bible tells us that in Philippians, I think it's 2, verse 5. And it, it talks about the mind. It says, let this mind, this same mind be you that's also in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. So that's the mind that you should adapt. It's the mind of Christ. And the last time I checked on Jesus Christ, his behavior was not like the world. Right. Yes. He was transformed. He renewed his mind. He became a living sacrifice. He said, not my will, but your will. So therefore, he says, Father, what it is that you want me to do? In your prayer life, go to God sincerely from your heart and say, Lord, I don't want to live for me. I want to live for you. But Lord, what it is that you want me to do? You can't begin to live like God or live for God if you don't even know what God wants you to do. You're swimming upstream. You went quicksand. If you don't have the knowledge, you, you can't begin to apply the wisdom. You need the knowledge to apply the wisdom. My people are destroyed because of why? Because of lack of knowledge and because they reject knowledge. Yes. They reject the word of God. They reject the truth. They want to be lied to bamboozled. People will fall for a scam faster than they'll go to church. You can get people to follow you to the ditch before you get them to follow you to the church. It's the world that we live in. Because of nature, your flesh. The Bible says we have to kill the flesh daily. So if you're not killing it on a daily basis, this is going to be very challenging to you. You're going you're gonna to have a hard time transforming. Yes. You're going to have a hard time renewing because God doesn't throw the word into your head. Uh, uh, he, he doesn't kick it into you. It's simply by free will. You simply have to pick up the Bible, yes. clear your mind, pray, yes. pray. Lord, open up my mind. Yeah. Open up my heart. Allow me to receive your will. Allow me to receive your word into my heart. Yes, Help me walk in obedience. Help me be an example. Help me present myself as a living sacrifice to this world, representing you as a child of God. Yes. Sincerely from my heart, God. I want to obey you. There are over 7,000 promises in the Bible from God. Say that. And you hear people preach about it all the time. Wow. Prosperity ministry. Yeah. Even in the gifts from God. Mm. There's, a, there's, a, there's a connection, there's a condition. You heard me quote that scripture when we was praising God about keeping you at peace. And at the end it said, because you trust in him. Yes. So without that trust, you can't, and your mind ain't on him, he can't keep me in perfect peace. Yes. Yes. It all goes together. Yes. A lot of times we'll take a, a scripture out of just one little scripture. And we'll hang that on the wall, mm -hmm. but forget the rest of it. Or in some cases, you have to go back to the chapter before yes. Yes. to truly get an understanding. Yes. The Bible tells us. Wisdom is the principal thing. Yes, Therefore, get wisdom. Yes. And all that getting, getting understanding. Yes. You have to get an understanding of what the word is actually trying to say to you. Yes. God's going to tell you to do some things that may be challenging. He says in his word, 2 Corinthians, uh, I think it's 6, verse 17. Mm -hmm. What well, God says, therefore, come from amongst them. Uh -huh. And be separate, says the Lord. 
touch not the unclean thing and I will accept you unto me. That's it. That's it. Once again, he's, he's asking us to do something. He's instructing us what to do to get to this holy and acceptable living sacrifice. All of it. All of it together. Package the word together. Yes. Don't just get a partial scripture and hang your hat on it. Get a clear understanding of the entire scripture. And, and, and allow the word. If you sit up on a good teaching, good word, good worship. Yes. And here's the key right here. And if you humble yourself, Humility won't allow you to do any of this. This can't be done without humility. When I was told I had to preach, you know the first thing I did, I prayed. I said, God, what would you have me say? As a preacher, you can give me two words out of my life preach. But that ain't what God told me to do. Why? I'm serving too. I serve God too. There may be a higher calling on my life, but I'm still a servant of God. And I never forget that. Because God cannot use me. God cannot instill His Holy Spirit in my mind and my heart to guide me through this world if I can't humble myself to receive Him. When you accept Jesus Christ you accepted him in your heart and by faith you were saved the Bible says we walk by faith not by sight so by faith that's how everything happens as a Christian in this walk is an individual thing so therefore God is going to build your faith God is going to help you with this transformation God is going to help you to renew your mind. But what you must do is you must humble yourself first and have a willingness to surrender your will for his will. Yes. That's the sacrifice. That is the sacrifice. I have no idea what it is that I want to do anymore because it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that I'm walking in obedience, doing what God has called me to do, being an influence and having an impact on earth before God. So souls can be saved, people can be delivered, folks can learn and understand the word of God, they can get in the will of God, and they can be a blessing to God, and we can win souls. If we can take that 2.75 billion and bring that up. Yes. All right. Now let's talk. Yes. Jesus impacted the life of people. Even though his ministry lasted three years, look how impactful he was. Why? Because he was totally sold out for God. He was totally committed to God. He was totally committed to the will of God, to the word of God. That he studied daily, night and day, and he meditated on the word of God, and he prayed. Jesus told us, it ain't about you. It is about our Father. I didn't give you the title of this message because I wanted you to listen. I wanted you to focus on the Word. But I tell you what the Lord told me. This is the title of this message. And he said, I beseech you, my brethren, Please follow the instructions of the Lord. Mm. That's what he told me. And I said, yes, Lord, I will. And I said, Lord, I'm going to go before your people. And I'm going to do my very best to humble myself and allow you to use me to speak to your people and to give them an understanding that if your desire is to truly be a Christian, to be Christ-like. There 
are some characteristics in the Bible that I believe that describe Jesus like no other. Like no other. And when you read this particular scripture, matter of fact, let's go there together. About to close. Let's go to Galatians 5. 22 and 23. I'm going to read this here again. It talks about the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. All those things describe Jesus Christ. To a team. These characteristics, we have to transform ourselves from the inside out to truly say we are Christ like. What's on the outside is going to change due to time. <laughs> and then you do like that. Gravity kicks in eventually, and all that. It just happens. It is what it is. I used to be a little guy. <laughs> Believe it or not. But what's on the inside? If the word of God exists on the inside, the Bible says heaven and earth shall pass, but the word of God shall last. The word of God is going nowhere. But I tell you where it should go, it should go in your heart. He said to the Bible, if I hide the word in my heart so I won't sin against you. When you called, you called out as a Christian. We, we make mistakes. We do, we, we do things. We, we, we get caught. I won't tell them, y'all. I tell them myself. Last Sunday, Pastor preached a message. And I had to immediately repent. Because I'm dealing with some things right now. And I don't, I don't talk and, and give a devil a platform. A lot of times I just deal with my prayer. But I'm, I'm truly, truly dealing with a situation, especially concerning my job. I allow my emotions to get the best of me. And for a moment, I forgot who I was and whose I am. He brought it back to me. And I came to the altar and I got prayer. And it immediately brought me back. But did you hear what I said? It brought me back. Because there's a foundation. Ain't no foundation, you can't come back. I went back to the word. I went back to what I was taught. I went back to what I learned. I went back to what I was committed to. And I said, Lord, forgive me. Cash your cares upon him because he can. Yeah. We have to know who God is. The Bible tells us who God is. Numbers 23 and 19. God is not like man mm -hmm. that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. In other words, what he says, he is going to do. What he has promised is going to manifest. God is going to do his part. Question is, are you going to do your part? How we live if we allow ourselves to become a living sacrifice and put God's will first before our will and to follow the instructions of the Bible, we will have success. Joshua talks about that. But understand this before I sit down. There's a formula. You're in a relationship. We, we can't forget that. Not only are we in a relationship, but who are we? We're servants. We were created to serve. It is our duty to serve. I'm serving right now in the capacity
that God has gifted me in. I'm serving. I'll be honest with you. Can I tell, tell the truth? When I first became a preacher, I, you know, I love so many of these scriptures. I preach about what I want to preach about. I was new. It sounded good. Matter of fact, I think I hooped and hollered a few times. But something happened to me along the way. As I continued to pray, you know what the Lord told me? What did I call you for? The gift that I gave you, and believe me, God has given me a wonderful gift. This, this photographic memory that God has given me, it's a beautiful thing. In school, I just never took a book home. Never took a book home. This, this Bible, look, it's, it's pretty old. But you can crack this Bible open. Look at this Bible. See, I said it's a study Bible. It's a column here, column there, column here, column there. I give you a scripture throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I tell you what scripture is on the page and which column. Amen. That's a gift. Amen. But see, I was caught up in me in the beginning. In the beginning. But then God spoke to me and he humbled me. And he gave me that scripture about pride. Okay. Boy, when I read that scripture, it all changed. That's the glory of God. That as you're going through this, he's going to drop things in your spirit to allow you to get on track. But you got to be a willing vessel first and commit to him first and stay faithful to him first. Love him first. Return to your first Lord because he loved you even before you were born. Now I put myself on glass. But you know, that was in the past. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> God's still working on me. <laughs> I ain't there yet. But I do love the Lord. Yes. I can say that. Yes. I, 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 I get emotional. And I get excited. Because of the word. Yes. Yes. And I see what it's done for me. Now my sister. I know she just stares at me sometimes. And probably says, that ain't my brother. Because see my sister and my mom. They know me. BC, before Christ. <laughs> when I say they know me, they know me. And if you ask them, how can this man stand before you today and preach the gospel, they'll simply tell you, because of God. So when you are walking in the will of God, if somebody tell you, I don't know what it is you got, but boy, I want it. Because what you got, a lot of Glory and praise because he woke me up this morning and he set me on my way. He put a word.